Good morning all, the Lord be with you. We have four Gospels in, New, in the New Testament. Each Gospel writer tries to recount what Jesus did as much as they could remember after Jesus ascended to heaven. The Gospels in the um, New Testament are pretty much on the same page in terms of when we seek to find out what salvation means, which is undoubtedly through Jesus Christ. But when you have a close look at them, they are slightly different in terms of what each writer had in mind when they wrote it and who was going to read it. In other words, the authorship and the recipients of each gospel were different. The Gospel of Matthew was written from a mainly Jewish perspective for the Jews, and the Luke's Gospel deals a lot about the poor and the sick of the time, which obviously highlights Jesus' compassion, love, and healings for those who were marginalized from the society. In John's Gospel, largely influenced by the Greek culture of the time, talks a lot about spirit, truth, light and darkness, and good and bad, or life and death. Mark's Gospel, which is considered to be one of the earliest Gospels, includes many stories of the Gentiles, were regarded as unfit to associate with the Jews. So some of the Jewish people of the time didn't even want to talk with them because they were regarded as unclean people according to their religious standard. So with that in mind, you may see the Gospel of Mark is quite a Gentile friendly Gospel and at the same time mission focused and talks a lot about discipleship. Today's story, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, can be seen in that line of understanding. The episode is set near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. As we have re reflected in the um, past several weeks, we find the story of the rich young man and the account of the disciples asking special favors from their teacher, and also Jesus third prediction of his passion and death. Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, perceived something those closest to Jesus could not see. Bartimaeus proclaimed Jesus as the son of David, even before the crowns of Palm Sunday used this title. And Bartimaeus glorified God and inspired others to give glory. And Mark's description of the disciples makes plain that they didn't understand who the Messiah was or why they were going to Jerusalem. In James and John's request, which reflected on last Sunday, Teacher, let me sit next to your throne when you become the king of Israel, resulted in a dispute among the disciples. Today they show an uncaring, even some bad attitude toward a blind man who is seeking a healing from Jesus. So similar to last Sunday, the disciples or long-time followers are getting in the way of God's power and purpose when blinded by merely human desires. I'd like to go a bit deeper into the conversation between our Lord and Bartimaeus. As you would know, the name Bartimaeus literally means the son of Timaeus. Ba in Aramaic means the son of someone, as in Bartholomew by Yesu. It was regarded as an honor to receive one of ancestors' name in the ancient Near East, but Bartimaeus' case might be a bit different. Timaeus means to honor. So Bartimaeus would mean a son of an honorable man or family in the community. However, if we consider the dominant honor and shame culture of the time, his physical impairment as well as his identity, as possibly as a Gentile man, must have put him in a highly disadvantaged position in the society. 
So when we think about his name being a, a son of an honorable man, but in contrary to the meaning of his name, he, he has lived his life as a blind man, as a beggar, and as a Gentile, which means at least from the Jewish perspective, he would not have expected any meaningful concerns from others. Most likely he would have been abandoned or neglected from the society. He was sitting by the roadside begging. Then he heard that Jesus was coming near to him. Then he sprang up and shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. He didn't even have any right to voice himself because his life was totally dependent upon others' reaction to him. But this time, he was different. He shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. I wonder why he raised his voice all the more. I believe the cry must have come from the deep down of his heart, his long years of pain, which would involve many rejections from people around him, resentment or anger against the unfriendly people, the unwelcoming world, and the unfair life he had to endure, and probably have ever, ever presenting ever present feeling of sadness and low self esteem and so on. Son of David, have mercy on me. His confession to Jesus is quite profound because it is done by someone who would never be able to claim himself to be a Jew, to be a Jew. and because it's done in the context where he, he would not be able to raise his voice. A blind man is calling the son of David. How could these two go side by side? How could this unclean, blind man, gentile man, call the most revered, clean man of the society? Through this bold and courageous confession, he didn't just cry out for a divine healing for which has caused him lots of pain since his birth. It was his sincere proclamation of faith which ridiculed many of the obstacles which had blocked him to come before God as who he was. By calling Jesus as the son of David, he has overcome the big barrier of race and religious prejudice. And by raising his voice all the more, he made a victory against the fear of rejection, hatred, despise from the people whom he had solely depended his life upon. His desire and yearning for God, not any other things, made all this possible. Bartimaeus is now standing almost naked before Jesus as well as the crowd, because his life and his heart had been completely exposed by his bold decision to come before Jesus and to be himself among the people. Finally, he seems to have found what he has been looking for many, many years. And our Lord Jesus doesn't leave him alone. The son of David listened to the blind beggar's cry. How awesome it is. And what a wonderful encounter it is. God meets a fragile human being at this awkward moment and in this weird setting. Then our Lord asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Then he answered, Rabbi, I want to see. Rabbi, I want to see. I don't believe our Lord asked this to make sure to give him a right treatment on his body. 
because our Lord must have known already about what Bartimaeus wanted even before he called his name. Then what does the question, what do you want me to do for you, really mean? I believe this is a question of faith to Bartimaeus. What our Lord is really asking him is whether he truly believes in him and whether Bartimaeus recognizes him to be worthy enough to be called the son of David and whether Bartimaeus truly wants to put his trust in him, that Jesus loves him and cares for him no matter what happened in his life. Yet Bartimaeus answered, Rabbi, I want to see. I believe our Lord would have received the utmost glory by this request, Rabbi, I want to see. Because what Bartimaeus said was his true, heartfelt confession of his faith. It is his bold proclamation in front of people and in front of God, that he truly believes that only Jesus can understand what he has been through. Only Jesus can heal his broken heart, and only Jesus can be his comfort and refuge. Bartimaeus demonstrated in front of the crowd that even the most disadvantaged, unrespected, marginalized person in a, in a society can bring the best glory, honor, and praise to God. So I believe Bartimaeus is a hero, and he has now become a most freed man among the crowd. Only Bartimaeus among the crowd was able to boldly confess Jesus as his Lord and Savior, overcoming his own sense of fear and rejection. I wonder if we might be able to be like him in terms of confessing our faith and praising the Lord's name in public. Restoring his vision is an enormous blessing, but the real blessing at this point of his life is that he has seen what human eyes cannot see, which is freedom in Christ Jesus. His spiritual eyes can now see how far God's grace reaches, while others with sight are all spiritually blind. There are many things that might hinder us from experiencing the freedom in Christ. Just like Bartimaeus had to endure years of pain because of what the society had projected on him, we might have experienced or are going through some challenges in terms of living out the life which God wants us to live. Money, education, job, relationship, future, health. All sorts of issues tempt to let us down. However, I'd like to encourage all of us to ask the Spirit of the Lord to help and guide us that we may rely on our Jesus, our Lord, even more so that God's glory be revealed in our lives as Bartimaeus' story teaches us. We are all blind and broken in some way, but by the grace of God in Jesus, we can be healed and be used for the glory of God. And I hope all of us can boldly confess without fear that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Bless you all. Amen.